Check one, two, check one, two. Can, can you hear me? Uh, I think we've got a, a dead mic or a, a bad cable. Uh, this is Steve Matza, Tribal Knowledge, episode number 13. Uh, this is a, a Shure SM58, one of the most popular microphones out in the audio market. And I think we either have a microphone problem or more likely uh, a broken wire in this XLR cable. XLR cables have the usual two conductors coming off the mic and a very fine wire mesh wrapped around the two conductors to keep outside magnetic fields from adding any kind of sound or hum into the microphone amplifier. And the amplifier is on the floor. It is turned on, the cable is in it. And we're gonna head upstairs and we're gonna do some quick diagnostics on the cable. I'm sure one of the, one of the leads is probably broken off one of the connectors because I don't see any uh, pinch marks on the cable itself. So we're gonna disconnect the cable and check the connectors on the cable. It's got a release button on the bottom. And we're gonna head upstairs and take this little screw out, push the wire in and see if uh, the connections are good on the three pins. All right, so now we're upstairs, continuing our diagnostics on the microphone XLR cable. And a couple of the things that we need, I know we're gonna need some solder some 60-40 alloy solder. It's a tin lead solder, 60% tin, 40% lead. It has a very low melting point of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the most popular alloy for solder. There are dozens of solder alloys, many of them without the lead for food service soldering. A pair of wire cutters, a pair of needle nose possibly that we'll need, bent needle nose pliers. Uh, I don't think we'll need a screwdriver, but I have a, a reversible Phillips straight blade screwdriver. Pocket knife as always. Who knows, you always need a pocket knife. And we have a Simpson Model 260 multimeter. This is the most popular multimeter on the planet. Reasonably priced and can measure any kind of electrical situation. Amps, volts, current, resistance. my favorite meter. So now we're gonna plug in the test leads. And one is red, one is black. And the black lead always goes into common. And red is always positive, goes into the positive jack. Uh, another tribal knowledge in the future will explain a lot of the different scales and usages of a multimeter. So first thing we're gonna do is we wanna check the resistance from one end of the cable to the other end of the cable, and we're gonna use resistance measurements. We're gonna use resistance times one on the scale, and when I short the two leads out, the needle goes all the way to the right, and we adjust the needle to zero ohms, zero at the right, so there's no resistance at all. When I disconnect the leads, there is no connection between the leads, and that now reads, infinite resistance, there's infinity on the left side of the scale. Right inside the meter itself is a little battery that powers this circuit, a, a D battery is powering this circuit. So I'm gonna take off one of the alligator clips. So we have the pointed probe, we have basically a male and a female. So we're gonna to connect to one of the pins at one end and check if we have continuity to the other end. And we don't have any continuity. So that tells us that that pin going all through the cable to this end is the problem. So I've already removed the little access screw. Can you do the other pins to show that that pin is the problem? Uh-huh, okay. Is that, now you see we got about a half of one ohm through the whole cable, through this 30 foot cable. So that middle pin is not the problem. And I'm sure the other pin shows the, a good connection as well. So that pin is the problem. So I've already taken off the little tiny. And that's just isolated to this specific cable. Right, this cable. So I've taken out the little uh, retainer screw and I can pull back the protective cover, 
And yep, we've got a couple of broken wires in here. And whoever put this cable together at the factory did a terrible, terrible job. The wires are too long and it does help to mark the, the pins. We've got a red wire going to this connector. And here's the white wire. The white wire goes to this connection. So we're gonna put a W over here. How do we know that? I can tell that the broken wire over here matches the broken wire over here. All right, and then the very fine mesh wire that wraps around the red and white are these two connections here, which we call the ground, because it does go to an earth ground connection inside the amplifier. So I'm just gonna cut these off. This why these wires are much too long. I can't believe somebody in quality control ever let this go by. So we're gonna snip off the red. All right, and we're going to. Why are we doing this? Wind it clockwise so all the strands stay together. Same thing on the white wire. Clockwise, it just feels better for a right-handed person. And then the ground braid, I don't know if you can pick it up that the ground braid goes all over the red and white through the whole length of the cable. Now these wires are much too long. All right, that's, they might have shorted out and again caused a similar problem. So I'm gonna leave only about a quarter inch on the wires. And here's the roll of solder. I'm just gonna take a little piece of solder so I don't have to hold this one pound roll. It is lead. You must wash your hands after handling lead tin alloy solder. And we have a fine point soldering iron. Any safety tips for uh, using a soldering iron? Well, just be very careful. The tip is quite hot. And I'm going to pre-tin, this is what they call pre-tinning it. It is actually a tin lead alloy, but they call it pre-tinning the wire. It makes things go together a lot faster. Now, should you be doing this over a napkin or? Well, if you do it all day, they do make tiny little exhaust fans so you don't breathe in any of the lead vapor. I mean, a job like this is very fast and there's virtually no lead vapor coming towards me, but uh, I work with technicians and they have these little exhaust fans on their workbenches to get the lead fumes away from them. So I've pre-tinned the wires and we're gonna remove this long piece of wire. I can't believe they actually used a piece of, left a piece of wire that long. So we're gonna remove that long piece. All right. And, all right, we're just gonna, let's see, the red. Soldering red to red wire to the red pin. Okay, well, we're going to hit pause for a moment because there's a, a little trick we can do. I got my soldering iron rest station out because I don't like putting this hot soldering iron on the granite surface. And we kind of need a third hand, so I'm going to put the connector on a, a ceramic plate and I couldn't stand it up for a moment so because the release button is on the bottom and I have to work on the top so we're just gonna tape the connector down so it's nice and steady and we'll go back to soldering 
All right, that is marked red. So put the red wire on the red pin. A little fast. I'm gonna come around. Hold on. Air on it. The solder dries almost, solidifies almost instantaneously. And now we'll go over to the white. I also have a, a small table vise that could do the same thing. And this time I'll use the little needle nose because I don't want to hold the, the wire because the wire is going to get pretty hot. Okay, that's the white wire. All right, and at the factory, they put this little piece of plastic sleeving on the wire, so I'm just gonna reuse it and push it back over the end of the wire. And now we have to attach the ground lead. The ground lead goes to that third connection. You haven't cut any solder. Is there just solder at the tip? There's solder. Nope, there's solder left on the connector itself. So that's the third connection. And then we have the cable clamp. We're re-crushing it. Then we can push the protective cover back over. And let's see. There's the threaded, there's the inner thread. There's the outer hole. And the release button goes into its slot. Here's the retainer screw. I don't have a number one Phillips screwdriver handy. This is a very small Phillips, for, be a number one Phillips blade. We we'll just use the trusty pocket knife for this one. You use that thing every day, don't you? That, uh, that is my knife. I should give that knife a name. Now we can turn off the soldering iron, put it back on its rest plate, Get the razor blade out of the way. We didn't need it. And we can quickly check that we have three good connections with the multimeter. Again, we're on resistance times one. And as I short the leads out, it reads zero ohms. That's a, a perfect, complete connection. I let go, it reads infinite, no connection. If I put it on R times 10,000, and I hold my fingers across the two leads, it's now reading 20 times 10,000. So there's 200,000 ohms across my body. So that's a little bit about resistance and multimeters. All right, so we're gonna go back to resistance times one, and we'll put one lead on one of the pins and just go fishing for the connection. Oh, so, so that's it right there. All right, so that's reading a half an ohm through 30 feet of cable. All right, I will check the middle pin here. All right, go fishing again, and we should get a connection on one of them. We do. Again, that's a half an ohm through 30 feet of cable. And then the last one is probably that ground mesh. Go fishing. Nice, good connection. That's about a quarter of an ohm. All right, now I'm also checking that there's no short to the other wires. 
All right, so we have now repaired that broken wire in this expensive XLR cable. So we've repaired the cable here, and just so you see, we've got male pins here and female pins there, and there's a, a little plastic key, so they only go together one way. That's another nice feature of XLR cables. You can just spin them until they catch. All right, and that's how the male and female pins go together. The microphone plugs into the male pins. So we're gonna head downstairs for the final test and make sure it works and we don't have any hum on the cable. Okay, we're back downstairs. We're gonna check the cable, make sure it works, make sure it doesn't pick up any 60 cycle hum from all the equipment around here. Plug in the mic. Plug the cable into the amplifier. Check, one, two, yes, the microphone is working. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to the next Tribal Knowledge, Steve Matza. Thank you.